the chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Thompson, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, last month, the Agriculture Committee welcomed Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Services uh, Deputy Undersecretary Stacy Dean to a long overdue hearing. Until last month, the agency of the United States Department of Agriculture that occupies more than 80% of the Ag Committee's spending had gone unchecked for nearly four years. Each of the section of Title IV, the nutrition title of the 2018 Farm Bill, made nominal changes to a program that has since exploded to serve more than 42 million individuals at a cost, current cost of roughly $9 billion per month. Now we need to contemplate SNAP through four principles, particularly as we shift from emergency spending and administration to more targeted and informed programming. First, we need to further explore how to serve recipients through innovation and flexibility. If the pandemic has taught us one thing, it is there is no one way to serve families in need. Second, we must think about the, the best ways to guide recipients to independence through employment, education, and training. While waivers related to work under the former administration were, were logical, they are now clearly keeping employable individuals idle and disengaged. It is time to talk about reemployment with a specific focus on those who have left the labor force. Third principles, we cannot deny program integrity has been compromised. I want to work with the department to return to and maintain the virtues of SNAP. This includes normal modes of data collection and normal modes of analysis and dissemination of information to ensure the responsible use of program funds. And last, and perhaps most importantly, we must come together to improve access and promote healthy foods and improve nutrition. Employment, health care costs, and general longevity are highly dependent on the foods that we consume. Together with modernized nutrition education initiatives, the nutrition research funding secured in the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 and the existing Library of Research on Healthy Eating, USDA, is uniquely positioned to improve the nutrition of millions of households, not just those deemed healthy. Now, I think my colleagues across the aisle can agree with each of these four principles. Where we diverge is how to preserve the program for those in actual need, without regulatory loopholes and fuzzy interpretations of the law, both of which exploit the very intent of the program. Where we, where we diverge is the reality that this, this is one title, this one title, will cost taxpayers nearly $1 trillion over the next 10 years. With this exorbitant spending increase, namely because of the less than transparent and questionable thrifty food plan update, the Biden administration and the current majority uh, consciously put a colossal financial and political target on any future farm bill, compromising not only the nutrition title, but the other 11 other titles which support and protect every farmer, every rancher, and every forester and rural community. And while my colleagues and I will continue to debate this attempt at executive overreach, I ask one thing of Madam Deputy Secretary, and frankly, the whole department at uh, USDA, be more forthcoming. As the ranking member of the, of the House Agriculture Committee, I prefer to learn directly from the administration, not from lobbyists, not from reporters, not from the internet. More recently, the White House announced a conference on hunger, nutrition, and health in September. Now, this could change how we think about health and nutrition, including in the Farm Bill, but it must be nonpartisan and engage community leaders nationwide. This should be a platform for innovation, objective research, and local approaches. That hearing should be the first of many that follows the Agriculture Committee to have an honest conversation about what's working and what's not and how we move forward toward